This woman killed all her ex-boyfriends in the space of 24 hours. And the reason she did it will shock you. 34-year-old Caroline Kangogo became one of the most notorious criminals in 2021 in Kenya after she ended the life of two of her lovers or ex-lovers in a space of 24 hours. In fact, she was even about to take on a third one before she had a change of mind. Her story became very high profile that police, along with the country's military, had to band together to search for her. And one of the reasons why it was so difficult for the police and the military men to find and catch Caroline was because she herself was a police officer and she was always one step ahead of them. But the story of Caroline goes even deeper than what it appears to be on the surface because even as direct as it is, there are a lot of theories that flips the pages of this tragedy in two parts. Why did this policewoman wake up one morning, pick up a gun and decided that it was time to kill all the men she had dated? What happened? What went wrong? And how was she able to stay ahead of the police force and the military power of the Kenyan government? What we know about Caroline is that she was a mother of two at the time of her death. She used to be married to a senior police officer, but then they got divorced. However, she had custody of her children. It was said she was attached to the anti-crime unit at Nakuru Central Station. Even by the time she was declared wanted, she was still working as a police officer. Now, sources say that Caroline was very good at her job as a professional. She was a very good police officer, a very competent one. But the problem was she drank a lot and always had affairs with her fellow officers. That to me is understandable. I don't see how confusing that would be. It is not uncommon for people in the same field to date themselves. And besides, Caroline was a very beautiful woman. So I would see why her colleagues would find her rather charming. But what they did not know is that a monster was building inside of this woman with every affair that she had with one of her colleagues. And maybe the marriage to one of them was what pushed her over the edge. It was around the 5th or 6th of July in 2021 that she was officially declared wanted after she was suspected of killing two men in the space of 24 hours. The first victim was a man named John Ogweno, a constable, a police officer, whom it was said was involved with Caroline. John Ogweno was found dead in his car with his engine running in the early hours of July the 5th, 2021. At a parking lot in the police quarter in Nakuru, he had been shot in the head and it seemed as though a stone had been used to break the glass, the window glass of his vehicle. And also, his official pistol was missing. Apparently, this was Caroline's first victim. But the problem with the killing of John Ogweno that is very confusing is the fact that, unlike the other people we're going to talk about that were at target, John Ogweno was the only one who appeared to not have done anything to her. On the contrary, she described John as her lover, as the love of her life, and even expressed regret in taking his life. One thing is clear, Caroline loved John. And maybe John did love her back. But the problem is, John was a married man. John had a family. So to John, Caroline was an affair. But to Caroline, who is divorced and single, maybe John meant more to her. Or should I just state it clearly, John pretty much meant more to her. But why would she have killed John? Why would she want to take the life of a man she claimed she loved? It's not clear which guns she used. It's possible that she used his own gun. It's possible that she had requested to see him and he invited over and they sat in their vehicle and talked for a while before things escalated. So in my mind learning about this story, I thought maybe she wanted more from John. She wanted John to maybe leave his own family and come be with her and John most likely refused. That is just my thoughts. And seeing that she clearly loved this man and knowing what she was about to do next, she probably thought maybe if she couldn't have him, no one should. That is just my theory. It's still not known or not clear why Caroline killed John. But why Caroline killed her next victim is something that is very obvious, very clear, up to the point that people feel like, well, eh, I guess she had her reasons. The second victim in less than 24 hours of killing John was a 32-year-old man named Peter Indwiga Nijuru. Peter was said to be an ex-boyfriend of Caroline. It's not clear if he came before John, but it's possible that she most likely dated him before John or even before the marriage. It's not clear. But according to the story, it was said that Caroline lured Peter by inviting him to a hotel where she had just lodged in Kimbo. And Peter accepted the invitation, came to the hotel to see her, most likely thinking this was just a hookup or this was just something that was going to be beneficial to him. He probably didn't think too much of it. After all, Caroline was his ex. However, Few hours after showing up at the hotel, he was shot in the head at close range. Then by midnight, Caroline excused herself from the room, 
went to the reception, acted as though she was going out to get toothpaste, and that was how she left the hotel. It was the next morning that Peter Indwiga's body was found. Now, I'm not so sure if Peter was also a police officer, but however, after finding John Ogueno's body and also seeing that another young man has been killed in a hotel, and after a lot of people had given description of the woman who he had lodged in with, and they were able to quickly connect the dots, saying that or citing that Caroline was familiar with these two men, and she also had not showed up for work, that was when they assumed and suspected that she might be the one doing this. And instantly, a wanted notice was placed on her head, and she was officially declared wanted the next day. But Caroline was sneaky. I mean, she is a police officer. She knew that the police were going to come for her. She knew the moves that they would make. It's possible she had an informant on the inside. It's very possible because how she was able to bypass them was something that up to now not many people can explain. I mean, at first the police were on to her looking for her. They went to her parents' house, went to her home. In fact, her family house was said to have been guarded by security men should in case she comes back. And all this happened over a week, nearly 10 days. How long would it take for the police officer to catch one of their own? Where would she be hiding? It became so bad that since the police were not forthcoming with finding her, they had to involve the military men, the army men in the force in the country to join them in the search. And even still, they could not catch her alive. In the space of these 10 days when the police were looking for her, it wasn't clear where Caroline was. In the 10 days that the police were looking for Caroline Kongogo, she was not quite in hiding. Maybe she was also attempting to hide, but one thing that we got to know is that she was trailing a third victim, her husband, Richard Ngeno. She was trailing his movement and trying to get a lot closer so she too could put an end to him. But the thing is, is either she had a change of mind due to the fact that Richard was may be very protected given the fact that Richard was a senior police officer in the field and he was always being carried about, being dropped. He was never most likely alone by himself. It would most likely be difficult for her to find Richard one-on-one -on -one. and I'm sure if she had done so, she would have most likely put a bullet in his head given the fact that she didn't like him that much. But eventually, it turned out that she had a change of mind realizing that she was going to leave two children behind and she knew that those two kids would need someone to care for them. And I believe that part. I believe that she changed her mind and not because she couldn't have access to um, Richard because I'm sure she could. I'm very certain that she could. All she had to do is invite him or all she had to do is risk it all. Go to wherever he is, put the bullet in his head, highest she gets caught and arrested or highest she gets shot back. But one thing that is clear or one thing that we know is that it was very obvious that for Caroline, it was over. She knew there was no coming back from this. She didn't want to be arrested. I feel like she knew in the end, in the end, she too would not come out of it alive. Whatever she has started, this killing spree that she had embarked on was going to be the end of her. And she knew it. And that was why she was most likely trying to take all her chances and even not doing her best to hide her trails. On Friday, the 16th of July, 2021, Caroline's body was found in her mother's house, in her mother's bathroom in Inyawa village. No one heard anything, no one saw anything. What is strange is that her mother's house, her, her, family, her parents' house, were secured. She was being looked for, she was wanted. So the police officer monitored every single house that she would most likely run to. Her mother's house, her father's house, her parents' house, her own house, her friend's house. Everywhere that they know Caroline would go to was under surveillance. And that is why it puzzled the police up to this day. How did Caroline get into her mother's house, to her mother's bathroom, in a compound that was completely secured and guarded and observed by police officers? It was said that on that morning, her mother was going to the bathroom when she stumbled upon Caroline's body. The mother raised the alarm and the police you know, again, they weren't very far off. They quickly came and saw that it was Caroline. She was dead. She was found with a pistol in her hand that had nine bullets left in it. What was also found on her was her mobile phone and a text message explaining everything she had done that she was about to send to her brother, but she never got to hit send. She probably never finished typing it. And in this text message, she explained everything she had done. That was how we got to know that she really had so much love for John Ogweno and apologized strongly 
for killing him, even stating that she could not wait to see him again, which meant to me or which for me interpreted as though she only killed John Ogweno because if she couldn't have him, no one should have him, which is really sad for the young man. This is why most times if you're married, having an affair can be really risky because from all her targets, John Ogweno was the least deserving of what she did to them. No shades. Maybe she probably had enough reason to want to target her ex-husband because he was most likely the cause of a lot of her sadness. Caroline was really sad, was an unhappy woman, and she expressed it in the text message. And also in contrast, saying why she killed Peter, you can tell that there was really no reason to kill John. For Peter, she made it clear that Peter was not good to her, that Peter was horrible to her, that Peter used her, that Peter even duped her of a whooping 1.5 million Kenyan shillings. Saying that due to the fact that she was in love with Peter, Peter used that to his advantage to the point that she even had to borrow 300,000 Kenyan shillings from her own father's retirement benefits. And when she confronted Peter to pay back, Peter was arrogant about it saying that he wouldn't even pay back. And not only did he refuse to pay back, Peter ended up leaving her for a younger woman, in which she believed Peter was using a lot of his money for himself and a new girlfriend. And so, to Caroline, that was why she targeted Peter. In the text message still, she went on to express how failed marriage was the cause of her sadness, and her father also disowned her because of her failed marriage, and how her husband manipulated everybody into believing that she was the reason why the marriage failed. She continued on hitting so hard on how badly her husband Richard treated her. The entire text was more about how Richard, the ex-husband, did her dirty. Talk about mistreatment, talk about abuse, talk about mental and physical torture, and talking about how Richard just kept cheating on her with multiple women. And that was why she was trailing him to put an end to him, but only to end up having a change of mind, knowing that she's now being looked for, she's now being wanted, and knowing that in the end, in the end, she will most likely not come out of it, and she would be leaving two children behind. And rather than just leave them without proper care, she hoped and prayed that Richard, since she had spared his life, would in turn take care of their children. In the text message still, she went on complaining about the police force and how our police officers and her bosses in the workforce also did not make it easy for her, saying that some of her senior colleagues and her bosses were demanding sex from her. And the demand of sex from what I got from the text appeared to be that she may have hinted that the police officers in the workforce were not being paid well enough. She complained that her son had asthma and that every now and then she had to go to the hospital, but you know they were not being kind to her and the money she was earning was not enough. She even advocated that the police pay another of their colleagues full fees and full money so that he can take care of himself because the way they treated her added to her sadness. In the text message, she requested to be dressed in a wedding gown and cremated for burial. But I don't think she was cremated. It's as though despite her supposed wish, she was still buried. Maybe in a wedding gown, but not cremated. Now, at the time of her story going viral, she was tagged the killer cop. And I think she most likely heard it in the news and knew they were coming after her. And in the text message, she admitted and signed off by taking on the name, I am Caroline, the killer cop. But now, this is where it even gets a lot trickier because many Kenyans and some of police experts believed that she was murdered and placed there. In fact, there's a whole theory that flips the pages of this Caroline Kangogo story that is claiming that she most likely did not kill these two men that she was most likely framed, that there was somebody out there killing this man who also targeted her. Due to the way she was even found in the bathroom with a gun to her hand and a bullet in her head, it did not make sense that she would do it herself. It did not make sense that she did it herself and somehow, somehow, the gun was still on her hands and her, one of her hands was placed in a pocket and her legs were crossed, almost as though she had been positioned in that bathroom by someone. Those who were there to see her body cited that there was not even enough blood on the scene and also noticed that her shoe was muddy, wondering where she would have gotten it from. The way Caroline's body was found in her mother's bathroom was very suspicious that it raised the possibility that everything we know about the 
Caroline Congogo's story might not be what it is. There is a high chance and a possibility and a large number of people who believe that Caroline might have been innocent and might have also been a target and might have been blamed and framed for a crime she did not commit. They believe her being found in her mother's bathroom was very staged. But that suspicion was pushed away and everyone just naturally went with the story that she did all the killing and had it all planned out from the very beginning. Although it is possible that the police wanted to check out that route of the possibility that someone else was behind all of these shenanigans, but Caroline's parents put a stop to the investigation and said that they don't want to continue investigating it, requested her body, carried out the autopsy, buried her, and put the story to rest. But personally for me, if she was not the one behind it, I think the hotel where she killed Peter should have most likely been where it would have been a lot clearer. If the people at the hotel said they saw her, booked the room, and she invited Peter, and Peter was found dead the next morning, then maybe she most likely was in it. For John Ogweno, the only way she's being directly tagged to it or she's being drawn to his death is due to the fact that she dated him in the past. It's not clear if any CCTV footage saw her with him. So maybe it's possible that somebody may have killed John and pinned it on her. But it appears that the odds are against her when it comes to killing Peter. And I think if there was a CCTV footage and all the people at the hotel were able to confirm they saw her the day Peter came over, then it's possible that she most likely is the killer cop that people say she is. And like I've already said, in the explanation of how her body was found and propped up in her mother's bathroom, in an area that was already under surveillance, and the police did not see her or see anything or see her jump over the fence, I can begin to have my doubts too. Is it possible that the police officers who were supposed to look after there were the ones who were in charge of propping her body and setting her up there? Is it? It, it could be, but it's hard to tell because the investigation or that route was never looked at. But the point is, or the thing is, or the truth is, the Caroline Congogo story is one that will most likely remain the way it is. So most likely be the killer cop that was once on the news. You guys let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about the story. Do you think Caroline did it all by herself? Do you think there was somebody else behind all of this? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can also turn on notification button so whenever there is a new video, you'll be the first to get notified. Thank you for watching.